Okay, we have a raindrop. You know, I suspect raindrops might not actually be that shape. I think they might be more circular. You can Google that. Anyway, the mass is that, the distance the raindrop falls is that, the speed of the raindrop as it hits the ground is that. Okay, state the relationship between momentum, mass, and velocity. Okay, you've just got to know this off by heart. Momentum of an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its velocity. Okay? It's a vector quantity because velocity is a vector, so momentum is a vector. Okay. Calculate the momentum of the raindrop as it hits the ground. Three marks. Give the unit. Okay? So, using this equation, that is equal to the mass is 0.0. 0.035 kilograms times the velocity, speed of the raindrop as it hits the ground, is 8.8. .8. Okay, stick that in your calculator and you get 0.0.0308. Okay, and it did say give the unit, but of course you should give the unit anyway, right? Unit of momentum is you can, you can actually work it out from this. It's kilograms times velocity. So it's kilograms meters per second. Kilogram meters per second. Okay. Good. Right, let's neaten this up. Uh, what's that? 3.08 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4 kilogram meters second, but you don't write standard form like that. You've only got to have one digit after the decimal. So that would be 3.1 times, the eight pushes that up to a one. 3.1 times 10 to minus four kilogram meters per second. Okay, good. State the, sorry, state the equation linking gravitational potential energy, mass, g, acceleration due to gravity, and height. Okay, well, again, you've got to know this off by heart. Gravitational potential energy is simply mgh. Okay, it's the mass of an object times acceleration due to gravity, g, times the height of the object above the ground, h. Okay, calculate the change in GPE when the raindrop falls 1,200 meters. Okay. Right, well, same thing again, just got to stick this into the equation. So, change in GPE. If you want to be a bit smart, you can say delta GPE, meaning delta meaning change, okay, a triangle, is mass 0.000035, got to be in kilograms, times G. Now, at the beginning of your exam question sheet, it says take G to be 10, okay? So use 10. But of course, I hope you know that G more accurately is 9.8 meters per second squared, or even more accurately, 9.81 meters per second squared. So G is 10 times the height, 1,200 meters, all in the correct units. You, you have to put things in the correct units when you put them in the equation. Height should be in meters, G should be in meters per second squared, and the mass should be in kilograms. Okay, so stick that into your calculator and you get 0.42 joules, 0.42 joules. Don't forget the unit and the unit is joules because it's energy, gravitational potential energy. Okay, state the kinetic energy of the raindrop as it hits the ground, assuming no energy losses, okay? So, here's the ground, okay, and this raindrop started off 1,200 meters above the ground. So we've worked out its gravitational potential energy there at the beginning of its journey. It's that, okay? And the question says, assuming no energy losses, what's its kinetic energy as it falls what's its kinetic energy there, just as it hits the ground, OK? 
Okay? Well, assuming no energy losses, it's the same because all of the gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Okay? At this point here, it's not moving. It's pure GPE. Okay? Gravitational potential energy. Halfway down, can you hear the rain on the roof? It's pretty loud for me. Anyway, halfway down, it, there's some GPE and there's some kinetic energy because it's moving, so it's got kinetic energy, but it's still above the ground, so it's got some GPE too. But here, as it hits the ground, its height is zero, so it's all kinetic energy. So the short answer, right, state the kinetic energy of the raindrop as it hits the ground. The kinetic energy is also 0.42 joules, okay, at that point there. But that's only with no energy losses. Okay, it assumes that all of the GP is converted into Ke. Right, state the equation linking kinetic energy, mass and speed. Again, you've just got to know this. Let's have a change of colour. Okay, kinetic energy is half mv squared. Okay, you, you've got to know that, right? Half times the mass times the velocity squared. Okay. Show that the speed of the raindrop as it hits the ground would be about 150 meters per second if there were no energy losses. Three marks. Okay. So we're told that this raindrop hits the ground at 8.8 .8 meters per second, but that's the, in reality, okay? because there is energy loss as it falls from friction with the air. But if there were no air, if this happened in a vacuum, okay, and all the GPU converted to Ke, what would the final velocity of the raindrop be? So, with no energy losses, the previous question, we just stated the kinetic energy would be 0.42 joules, okay? So, got 0.42 is equal to the half m v squared, right? But we know the mass, so 0.42 would be equal to half times the mass is 0.000035 times v squared, okay? Rearrange that and you get v squared is, bring two up there, 2 times 0 0.42 divided by 0 0.000035, okay? So therefore the velocity is the square root of that, 2 times 0 0.42 over 0 0.000035, stick that in your calculator and you get... Well, that, that whole thing turns out to be 24,000, okay? So that's 24,000. So V is the square root of 24,000. So V turns out to be 154.9193, whatever, whatever, okay? And the question asked, to ask you to prove that the velocity would be about 150 meters per second, and 154 is about 150. Okay, don't forget the unit. So you can say, if you like, therefore V is approximately equal to 150 meters per second. Okay, good. Now, that will get you full marks, okay? But there is another way of answering this question that I want to show you, 
which is a slightly more professional way, shall we say. Rather than diving in with the numbers early doors, what you do is say, okay, there's no energy losses, therefore all of the GPE there, okay, which is MGH, is converted into kinet all is converted into kinetic energy there. So the GPE there is equal to the kinetic energy there, half MV squared. Right? And that's that's that equation there. It's just that I've written it as MGH instead of 0.42. Okay? Well, we can work out the velocity as it hits the ground from this. It's nicer this way because you don't have to introduce numbers early on. So look, m on the left, m on the right, they cancel. Okay? Rearrange and we get v squared is 2gh. Okay? So therefore v is square root of 2gh. Okay? So put the numbers in. And that's the square root of 2 times g is 10 times the height is 1200. Okay? And that is the square root of 10 times 1200 is 12,000 times 2 is 24,000. Oh, look! It's the same. Okay? Which is, so that of course is the same, it's 154.9193, whatever. Okay, so that's the, that's the pro way of doing it. You can do it like that in, the, in your exam as well, if you like. And I encourage you to get comfortable with this method because you're, you're only putting numbers in at, at the very last stage. Up to that point, it's all letters, which is mathematically a much nicer way of doing things. But like I say, you'll get full marks for that. Okay, where are we? Final question. Explain why the actual speed of the raindrop as it hits the ground is much less than 150 meters per second. Okay, well, we touched on this earlier. The actual speed of the raindrop is 8.8 .8 meters per second. And the speed it would be if there were no air, no energy losses, is 150, nearly 155 meters per second. Okay, so the reason is that as a raindrop falls, there's a whole bunch of air between it and the ground, so there's friction between the raindrop and the air, okay? You could say, you could describe it as drag or air resistance. Okay, I would recommend getting all three of them down on the paper. Like I say, give the examiner as many reasons as possible to give you full marks. Okay, so because there's friction between the raindrop and the air, there is therefore energy loss to the surroundings. Okay, and you can also say it reaches terminal velocity. Okay, all of that will get you your two marks, definitely. Good, and I think uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and it would be a massive help if you could subscribe. It would also be amazing if you could support me on Patreon. All the papers and everything are on my website, drgem.com, and I'm also on social media. Thank you.